Hello and welcome to Miranda Patron Art. I usually start my videos by showing the color palette I'm going to use, but I don't know today, so I was just going to pop on here on my Pinterest page, which I'll post a link for, to look at some color palettes and get inspiration for myself here as well. So usually you'll see the ones that I'm working on in the very beginning, but like I said, I am not sure what colors I want to use today, so I was just going to filter through here, take a peek, and decide what would be fun for our little project. So we're going to do a gift jar today. It's going to be super fun, so stick with me to find out where this adventure leads. Okay, so I have fallen in love with this yogurt. It's absolutely delicious, but I'm not here to tell you about the yogurt, although it is very good. I think I've tried all of these flavors except for the peach and maybe the mango, but I love both of those, so I'm sure I'll like it. Anyway, the jars are super cute, super sturdy, and the labels come off very easily. I didn't even have to put them through the dishwasher. I could just peel it off with minimal adhesive um, residual on the jar. So I was thinking if I could find some sort of lids for these jars because that's actually how I started selling my art was making lids for jars and selling them as gift jars for people during the holidays or to my nursing friends at the hospital. So here is what the jars look like. They are super adorable. The label comes off really easy. You just peel it off and then you are left with a nice clean jar. And so I'm not going to paint the jar today, but in my searches online, I have found these adorable little lids that fit perfectly. They have a silicone seal in them and they seal right in the jar. So I am going to paint this little guy here for you today to show you how to do like a DIY little gift jar um, with a dot mandala on the top of the lid. And of course, as usual, I'll post the links down in my description if you are interested in anything I have in the video. All right, so I think definitely we're going to go with black background today. Sometimes I do different colored backgrounds and I think gauging um, this gorgeous bamboo wood, I might actually do some raw without a background, but it is very helpful to have a background when you're beginning because if you accidentally do something that you are not super excited about and don't want to keep, I don't want to say mistake because I feel like you don't really, it's art, you don't really have a ton of mistakes in art. It may just not go as you had planned. Um, but I don't like to call them mistakes because I think it always comes out beautiful. So I'm just going to put the black background on this one just in case we need to scrape off some paint and paint over it since I have never painted one of these before myself. Um, I'm going to test it out here and see if I need to seal it first, see if maybe I put some wood filler down, but I don't think we're going to have to. The, it's actually a pretty decent surface. So I'm just going to do this and gauge how much the black absorbs into the bamboo. I love this turntable. This thing was one of the best things I could have purchased for creating, especially small pieces. All right, so you can see it's drying here and we don't have any spaces that are coming through. So I think we will be good to go with just the black paint for a base. If you do want to, you can put a layer of sealer down first and then paint on top of that and then just seal it again at the end. But I don't think I'm going to do that today. I think I'm just going to go with it with the regular background here. So the first for the center dot, I'm going to use this acrylic rod and primary yellow. and. A lot of times I just eyeball the center. I did measure this lid just to kind of gauge, see the dot there, just to kind of gauge where I want the center dot because that's going to help you keep your symmetry for your mandala. If you just find the center and then you work from the center out, it just helps things to stay symmetrical. So 
So I use a variety of tools in all my videos. This was, like I said, an acrylic rod, but they're also styluses and all sorts of things. So, but here I just want to show too, you can put in guidelines. This is my etcher tool and it just kind of scratches on the paint, which you cannot see too well in the video, but just, I guess you'll have to take my word for it. Maybe I'll show a doctor, but you just kind of scratch onto the paint. You can see it a little. And this way, it'll, if you wanted guidelines as to where to put your dots, then you can kind of give yourself some guide um, to have spaces. And you can see it here, maybe. I don't generally use this, I just kind of, after years, you know, you make a plus sign and then fill in in between, and there are other methods, so. <laughs> so I'm going to use this dotting stylus, just one of the smaller ones I have. And you would just make kind of like a plus sign, so above, and then it's still the primary yellow, and then below. I'm going to steal it from the center here, <laughs> and then do on either side. And you can see, because there's less paint in the middle, these dots are a little bit smaller. It's not the end of the world, though. So on the 45 degree angles, you're just making basically another plus sign. Just halfway in between the dots you put down first. And then in between all these, we'll put another round. And that'll give us a good base, the first ring around the center dot for our mandala. And again, these are all still the primary yellow. You want to use water-based acrylic paints when you're dotting just because it's such a good consistency. You don't have to mix anything with it. Kind of want it fluid, about like yogurt. <laughs> so, one of the things you can use is a mechanical pencil, or I use this etcher sometimes, um, but to make tiny dots. So I want to just dip the lead and in between each of the ones we put down, put a tiny one in here. And that's just something you'll have around the house probably is a sharpened pencil or a tiny mechanical pencil. And I've spent years just dipping everything in paint just to see what they do. So it's fun experimenting. And it's also budget friendly. I mean, a lot of the stuff you already have on hand in the house, we've used screwdrivers, we've used toothpicks, end of paintbrushes. I mean, you can use anything. All right, so now I'm using coral shell here. And I'm gonna do just the plus sign first because I'm not sure how many I want in this ring around. So see how it's just squared off? And then I'm just going to do them in between those two and we will leave that round with just the eight dots. All right. So this is the silicone oval dotter that I have and we're gonna grab the coral blush and I think at the end of each one of these peach ones, I was thinking in between, but I think at the end of each one of these, we will put the oval dot. So you're just holding it almost like a pencil, like you would write, and that way it'll be flat on the surface to make the ovals. The other end of this makes these super cute little petals too, so I use both ends. So again, I'm going to do my plus sign just because I like to gauge how much space I'll actually have in between these afterwards. So do I want to actually put the ovals above the, each one of the lighter corals? And I think I can fit them in with a nice design around them. Then yes, we'll, we'll gauge that spacing, but at least it gives me an opportunity to pause where I was at with just the plus sign. We could have just done a quad but we'll be able to fit the eight ovals around and make a nice little design on this. There are a considerable amount of silicone tools out there now as well. I have a couple videos using those. Um, 
This one I like, it's about just under a half an inch in length to make the ovals. And now I'm going to use the three millimeter dotting stylus with the berry cobbler. And down at the base of each of these in between the coral shell, I'm going to put a nice little dot of that berry cobbler in here. Just gonna tuck it right in. This way too, you get into kind of like a rhythm. Spin and dot, spin and dot. I love this turntable. All right, so these have dried overnight now, just to be honest. <laughs> but, you know, you could have come back to it when they were still kind of damp and worked on it. I just didn't have enough time to get back to it yesterday. So they are thoroughly dried now. And I'm going to use this very bright yellow. And we're gonna put some dots around our ovals. Now a lot of people call this technique walking the dots. So if you see this or hear about this on the groups on Facebook or something like that, this is what they mean when they're saying walk the dots. You dip it once in the paint and then you let the paint run out off the tool and it makes a progressively smaller dot each time you touch it to the surface. So see, sometimes I get in the habit of only going in the right direction with this, to the right, to the right. That's kind of just a muscle memory habit. I got a little too much on that one, so I'm gonna drop the paint off over there so that there's smaller dots when I start here. Just a little trick. Every time you redip it, you're going to go back to that largest size dot that you started with. So if you drop the paint, a little bit of paint off on the paper or somewhere else, then you can go back to having smaller dots. And in looking at the screen, I'm kind of liking just having the one side, so I'm debating on whether or not I will do it on both sides. That's one of the fun things, though, about these choose-your-own-adventure type mandalas. <laughs> you start in the center, and then I pick some colors, and you see where it takes you. This is a nice yellow contrast to that coral that we used. I like these sunset colors. I'm really glad I found this palette. And I think I'm going to grab the peach, uh, not peach, I'm sorry, coral shell, which is the lighter peachy color. And we'll do a row of those next around the yellow. We'll make this kind of a asymmetrical type flower. I think I am gonna keep them like that. So this is still with the etcher tool and I'm just gonna go directly above the ones that we already placed and just work my way around. So I had some technical difficulties, but I did finish up that coral shell around each of those. I'm not sure what's going on with my hard drive on my computer today, but just so you see each of these, I finished off the coral shell around each one. And I'm going to grab coral blush and the etcher. And we'll go around the coral shell ones that we just put down. We'll tuck one more row of dots around these ones with the etcher again. And so you'll have to kind of gauge how much space you actually have. I can tuck probably this last row in and that's it. And this is the dark one that we made the ovals with. And I'm just gonna do this one last row around each of them here.
And you'll have to kind of gauge, that's how you know how to keep your symmetry. So if you want to do an extra part of the design in here, just double check to make sure you have a, a space allowing for that all the way around your mandala. I'm notorious for doing asymmetrical ones, so sometimes there'll be different things on either side. But don't stress too, If just take your time and relax. Oh, it did it to me again. Take your time and just relax and then enjoy painting. It's not about I'm doing 10 dots here and 9 dots there. It's just, okay, I got coral blush in that zone to give the look I wanted. So I went around with the coral, <laughs> coral blush and I have one more here to do. I'm going to have to have my hubby. He's the technological genius here in the family. Have him take a look at my hard drive. I'm not sure what's going on with this. Time. Enjoy that. So all of that was the next round of dots there. Okay, now all I have this wet in the palette, the bright yellow, we're going to take that and we're going to top dot in the center here. So we have the dark one as a background and then this is lighter. Also, I'm going to grab some of that coral shell and in our oval dots towards the base, the internal area of the flower, I'm going to put a large oval dot of the coral shell in there just to kind of give it a lighter effect of the top dot. And that's with the large 3 millimeter stylus. All right, so there's this lovely multi-surface one called Fruit Punch. I may or may not be obsessed with this as one of the pinks, but we're going to grab some of that here. We're going to take our etcher tool and dip that in the Fruit Punch. Okay, now we're just going to take our time and very slowly start at the top of our dots here and we're going to drag it down in to the space in between there. So if you feel more comfortable starting it from towards yourself, it's a muscle memory um, kind of activity. So um, I can see better with the video doing it this way. So I'm just going to do this and drag it down in gently and slowly. So all the things that people call this, you know, the dot drag, the comma stroke, the swipe, the swoosh, it always sounds fast. It looks like it's done quickly. Obviously in the sped up videos, you're not seeing it in real time, but if you take your time and you keep your tool, whatever tool you're using, keep it close to the surface, it'll just slowly wick the paint off the tool and you have less and less and less and less and the tail will get smaller. So you can practice on paper on the side and see how long you can actually drag out the tail with how much paint you put on your tool for each different kind of tool. So you'll get used to using whichever one and knowing how much paint goes on it for each one you use. But take your time because it allows you more control, allows better placement of where you're putting this. Um, really, I mean, even with dotting in general, I think that you should just take your time and enjoy it. We're always in a rush <laughs> with everything else in life, so slow and steady, just 
take your time and tuck it in where you need and it just allows for better placement so I'll do the side angle too so you can kind of see the tool I'm literally dragging it I'm not I see a lot of people saying don't really touch the surface no I'm pushing down just like you would write with a pen or pencil I'm pushing down and I'm pulling the paint around and I didn't get enough on it there so I want to dip it again here but that's something too that you'll learn is how much paint you need on your tool just to get the results that you want now you'll see some of these I was able to pull down longer some of them went all the way around this one didn't don't stress about that kind of thing <laughs> no one's gonna analyze it like I said even measuring the dots oh this one was half an inch this one's over half an inch this one's under half an inch it's never gonna be perfect perfection is kind of an enemy <laughs> we're not gonna be perfect it's just to be contemplative and enjoyable and to come away with just a lovely little piece so don't stress enjoy this time I constantly need to be reminded of that as well so I'm saying this just as much for my own benefit <laughs> as everyone else's I promise all right so now to carry that fruit punch in I think I'm gonna use the small end of this and on just to kind of brighten up this to the background for some reason that berry cobbler dried pretty dark so I'm gonna take the small end and just put a little top dot in each of these give it a little depth there okay now I think I'm gonna take this coral blush and I'm gonna show you with the dotting stylus also how to do the swipes so we're just gonna take the coral blush color and next to each of these ones that we've done we're gonna use it to make a swipe next to each of those you know what I think this one actually is a little too big so the angled ones will hold more paint just so you know I'm gonna go to the absolute smallest size dotting tool that I have which on this set is the yellow and go back and grab the coral blush here and just a little bit lower you see I'm just gonna take that and you slowly follow the line we created with the tropical pink here it again dot slowly drag it around put it down oh I don't quite have enough paint and slowly pull it around in And this way see I'm keeping it I'm literally touching and pushing down on the surface like you write with a pen or pencil now word of caution with swipes don't go back up here or there and try to drag it out again because it will fatten up certain areas and it won't be uniform so take something like a smaller mechanical pencil or like if I wanted to take this the other end of the etcher is sharp so you can just kind of grab a little bit of that paint and just kind of pull it down in so that's if you want the tail to be just a little bit longer without kind of widening your area in 
the rest of it. And then you can pull it down in and kind of shape it a little bit with this too. Okay. Oh, it's looking so sweet. What are sunset colors? I love it. Alright, so now just to kind of give it a little finishing touch, a little bit of delicacy, I almost said, but that's not what I mean. <laughs> like delicateness, maybe that's not a word either. Make it look a little more delicate on the edges, like a doily. I guess I used to think these looked like doilies when you did the white dots. But I'm going to take white and my small dotting tool. And just in each of these spaces where the swipes kind of meet the dots on the other side, I'm going to finish it off with some white accents to brighten it up a little bit here. And again, I'm just tucking it as far as I can without shoving it in there and overlapping. And so some of them will be out a little farther than others. Some of them will be in more than others. It's art. Do not stress. It's going to be lovely. And then grab the etcher or your mechanical pencil or whatever you're using for the little, little micro dots. And just do kind of a little sprinkle. Sprinkle on that edge here. Let's do like one, two, three. And then we'll take a look at it and see how we feel about is it finished? Does it need more? I'm getting close to the edge here. See on that one? I might not be able to do any more as far as this area is concerned. So that's something you have to be uh, cognizant of to aware of. That you have to notice your spacing for each section. Because with mand mandalas, you know, you keep for your symmetry by doing the same thing around the whole thing in every spot. And if you don't have any space on some of it, you can't do the same thing in every spot. Sometimes I got carried away and forgot to think about that, so... I think, I think these coral shell top dots are dry enough. I'm going to try to accent them a little bit with the white. And then maybe the center. But then we're going to be done. Or I'm going to be done. Obviously you can go further if you feel like your design needs more. But I was so excited when I found these lids. My sister does wood burning and they have flat ones too. I was going to see if maybe she'd wood burn some for me to give us gifts. Let's see how the white really brightens, brightens it up, gives it a little bit of a pop. All right, I'm going to attempt this in the center. That middle dot might be a little wet, but I'm going to try it. Usually you should wait for these other ones to dry before you do this, but there we go. Oops. All right, and there is our little jar top. This came out really good. I'm excited. So, <clears throat> all right, now, as with most of my projects, I'm going to use the Liquitex Professional High Gloss Varnish. After this is dry, I'm just going to put one coat to protect it. So I'll post links for other items you can use to protect your work in the description just like all the rest of the stuff from the video. But I have to let this dry all the way and then I'll just probably pour it to be honest in here and swirl it around because you have this little ridge and then it will stay in that area and we'll have a beautiful little lid for our jar. Alright, so I hope you guys enjoyed creating this with me today. It gave us a nice little fun DIY gift that doesn't cost a lot of money. And it's recycling things like yogurt jars, which I really enjoy. So I hope you had fun making this fun little jar top today. And I would love to hear your thoughts on it. 
hear how things are going for you stop by in the comments and say hi where you're from just help the help the algorithm notice that the videos are here <laughs> you can do this to support anybody on youtube that you follow so you can just give a comment it helps have interactions on their their channel and it will recognize that people are engaging with that content so help a girl out say hi i'd love to hear from you anyway i love this community and it's good to be back doing things with you guys all right i hope you all have a great day happy painting